everyone. My name is Teresa Poltrova. I'm a senior writer at space.com and today I have something really special for you. I'm here with Sir Brian May, the rock legend of Queen, who also happens to be a part-time astronomer. And he was one of the scientists uh, working uh, with uh, data and images uh, coming from NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission. OSIRIS-REx was NASA's first mission to collect a sample from an asteroid and it will soon deliver this sample to Earth. And Sir Brian actually worked with Dante Loretta, OSIRIS-REx chief uh, investigator, on a beautiful new book about asteroid Bennu. And he is here now with us to tell us everything about this book and his uh, collaboration with uh, OSIRIS-REx. Thank you very much for finding time to talk to us. It's a great pleasure. So let me start at the beginning. You and OSIRIS-REx, how did the two of you get together? Oh, well, quite informally, really, because um, I'm on the outside of NASA. I mean, and nobody pays me to do this, but I love it. And I and my collaborator, uh, Claudia Manzoni, generally go around the internet to find things which we can make into stereos. Because the data is all there from all these different missions, from NASA, from ESA, from JAXA. There is enough data there to find viewpoints in order to, to make the stereo images which we crave. We just love making stereo images. And of course, then you have to use um, a viewer to, to uh, appreciate them in 3D. <clears throat> and um, I mean, I'm creator of the London Stereoscopic Company, and we now make stereo viewers. We make 3D viewers. Um, so what happened with me and Dante was I sent him just off the cuff uh, a couple of his images, which I'd made into 3D, along with Claudia. And he was amazed. He said, I've never seen them like this. This is, this is such a great tool. And this might be able to help us find the landing site that we need in order to get our samples safely. Um, so we started to interact. Uh, we started to uh, trade emails and pictures. And from that point on, I mean, we, we've become very good friends during the, the passage of time. But a lot of work, because when it became serious, we're not just making pretty pictures. We're um, supplying them with images that they can view and make that crucial decision. Is this a flat enough site to land our spacecraft? Will it be safe? Will we get the sample back to Earth? So that's what I became engaged doing. And a lot of work, but very, very happy work. Is there any particular reason why you are interested in this mission? I'm interested in them all. <laughs> I was incredibly lucky to be involved in the New Horizons mission. Uh, with Alan Stern, who also kind of took me under his wing, and I was able to s help secure 3D pictures of Pluto. See, no one had ever seen Pluto close up before. So I was able to to bring, um, I think, the universe's first uh, 3D picture of Pluto to light. Um, and they went on to photograph an object in the Kuiper Belts, as you probably know. Um, but yes, Rosetta also, we've made some lovely stereo images. of. So maybe there's a book there, too. I think the difference is that um, that Dante wanted to involve me and involve us at an early stage so that we could actually contribute to the conduct of the mission. That's the crucial difference. I understand that you were actually called upon to help the team solve a major issue they had trying to find a suitable landing spot on the surface of an asteroid that looked very different than they expected it to. Do you remember how the atmosphere was among the scientists uh, during this uh, challenging time? Yeah, well, I think it was suddenly becoming much more difficult than they'd expected because Bennu wasn't a solid object with flat places. It was a completely randomly a crude object. It's a rubble pile and there are no places where it's safe to, to land, apparently. Um, there's only sort of different sizes of pebbles and it's very difficult to assess what the landing will actually be like if you can't be there and see it with your own eyes. That's where this comes in handy, because once you have a stereo image of that particular potential landing site, you can really make an instinctive judgment as to whether things are going to work out or not. You know, how near is this boulder? How much slope is there? How dangerous is it to be to get it off and get on? Um, so that's where we were able to get into it. And I know that uh, at, at one point, Dante said, look, all my guys have to see this. I've seen it. This has changed my whole opinion. I want my whole team to see this. So I sent about a box of these and um, everybody sat around a table, I think, and made those decisions looking at Bennu as if they were there. So can you explain to us how do you create these stereo images? Basically, to make a stereo image, you need two different viewpoints. Just as in real life, when I look at you, 
My left eye has a viewpoint and my right eye has a viewpoint. Slightly different. I see more of your, your cheek here. I see more of your cheek here. And um, that's the whole thing. I mean, I, I've said it there. Um, what you have to do in making a stereo image is to reproduce that effect. So I have to take a picture from my left eye. I have to take a picture for my right eye. And then I put him in a viewer, like, like this, in the situation where my left eye only sees the left image and my right eye only sees the right image. Then the effect is reproduced. So I see this crater as if I were about a mile away from Bennu, um, but my eyes are about 100,000 miles apart. No, not, not that far. <laughs> Delete that. My eyes are about half a mile apart. <laughs> so how did the idea for the book come about? We made so many images, and um, it was a labor of love, and it was also very rushed. And I remember saying to Dante, we should do the book. You know, we have such an amazing collection of images, not just of the details of the surface, also of the, of the, um, the whole planet, which, which is something very attractive. And so we started to think of, of a book, and we realized that it could be the, the world's first opportunity to make a real atlas of, a, of an asteroid. So that's what we attempted to do. And the fact that it has stereo images as well, I think, makes it something very, very unique and special. So who is the book uh, aimed at? Who is the target audience? The book is really aimed at anyone who has an interest in this kind of subject, anyone who's interested in what they see when they look up in the night sky. It's not just for scientists. There's a lot of, well, there's a whole world of scientific information in there for anyone who wants it. But if you read it as a story, you should be able to understand it without prior knowledge. Mm -hmm.